Have you ever wondered what geometry is? All that lot of weird, random, multi-sided shapes your math teacher keeps on prattling about are driving you crazy, right? But don't worry, here's the perfect video for help. Geometry for dummies. So, how did this agonizing subject start, anyways? Well, it was there since two million years ago, until a guy named Elucid of Alexandria came and standardized it. Anyways, shapes were already here a long, long time before Elucid was even born. Shapes are made up of three main features. Points are vertices, lines, and planes. Well, not those sort, this sort, but I'll explain later. What are points anyways? See this triangle? There are three points, zero, one, and two on this triangle. Some points are known as corners and some as vertices. Lines. Lines are known as what connect the points together. See, these are all lines. There are three different types of lines. Line segments, lines, and rays. Line segments are the most common in shapes because they start at one point and end at another. If it was a line, it would go on and on forever, two ways. And if it was a ray, it would go one way on and on forever. Planes are exactly 2D shapes, which make up 3D shapes. But I'll explain that later. Now, what are the bits of hot triangles which are inside the shapes? They are angles. Angles are measured using a protractor from 1 to 360 degrees. The basic angles you really need to know. Acute angles, they are from 0 degrees to 89 degrees. Obtuse angles, they are from 90 degrees to 179 degrees. Straight angles, they are exactly 180 degrees, or a straight line. Reflex angles, they are from 181 degrees to 359 degrees. A full rotation is exactly 360 degrees or half a straight line, or the whole of a protractor. Shapes. Those weird looking mathematical creatures are not to be feared. They are kind friends. They are divided into two main categories, 2D and 3D. The above things that I've just mentioned, the lines, points, and planes, make up shapes that have length, width, and depth. 2D shapes, or polygons, or planes, are flat, even flatter than a pancake. They have absolutely no depth and are only made up of line segments and points. They also come in different shapes and sizes, but most figures we see in dreaded textbooks are polygons. A polygon is a closed figure made by connecting line segments, where each line segment end connects to only one end of two other line segments. Confused? Here are three polygons. Here are two non-polygons. The first non-polygon is not a polygon because one of the line segments do not join up with another. See here and here. The second one is not a polygon because it is not completely made up of line segments. Polygons are further divided up into regular and irregular shapes. Regular shapes have sides that have the same length and all their interior angles are the same, such as squares or triangles. Some other examples of 2D shapes are circles. Now we're getting into the really tough part. You will find out how to differentiate between similar and congruent shapes. Here are two shapes. Are they congruent or are they similar? They are similar. They are the same except for their size. Now look at these shapes. Are they similar? No, they are congruent since they have to be flipped only before becoming the original shape. So the basic rule of differentiating on similar and congruent shapes is congruent shapes only have to be reflected or flipped over, translated, or slid into the same position as the first shape, or rotated. While similar shapes have one more step to do before completing. Resizing. Here here are a few more problems. 
two triangles. Are they similar or are they congruent? They are similar. You have to resize them first before completing. Now here are three triangles. Are they similar or are they congruent? They are congruent. You don't have to do any more resizing than this. Length and width are the most common terms appeared in geometry. Here's rectangle. You can see the length and the width clearly. Here is also the most basic form of area. Length times width equals area. So if the length was 3 and the width was 4, what would the area of the rectangle be? It would be 12 units squared. The same thing goes with squares. Now onto your triangle. Since the square folded diagonally is a triangle, the triangle says half the area of the square. That's when base comes in. Sometimes you can't really tell the length of the original square, so you have to compensate with the base. The main thing about length or height and bases is that they have to be at a right angle to each other or the formula won't work. So the formula is base or width times height or length times one half equals area. You have to times it by a half because you have to fold the square in half in order to get a triangle. Circles. We'll come to that in a moment since there are a whole lot different stuff than triangles and squares. For 3D shapes. Now we don't call it area anymore, we call it volume. For cubes, you just have to add one more thing to the length and width formula. Height. So, in case you really don't know, the formula is not length times width equals volume, it's length times width times height equals volume. And, of course, units cubed. For a pyramid, it really does depend on what base your 3D shape is. If it's a square base, you have to calculate the base first. If it's a triangular base, you'll have to calculate that base first. The formula is area of base times height times one third equals volume, also in units cubed. Why times one third? Because a pyramid only takes up one third of the space of a cube. So for this pyramid, it has a rectangular base. If the length was five, the width was six, and the height was four, the formula would be five times six, which is the base, times four, times one third equals 40 units cubed. Perimeter. Perimeter is somewhat closely linked to area, mainly because it has the same basics mentioned earlier. Perimeter is only applicable to 2D shapes. Perimeter is just the exact opposite thing of area. It is the distance around a 2D shape. If you were to calculate the perimeter of a rectangle, You would have to add up all the length of the sides, or length plus length plus width plus width equals parameter. Or if you want the easier way of doing it, it would be 2 times length, because a rectangle had 2 length, and 2 times width, because also the rectangle also has 2 widths equals parameter. So, if the length was 10, the width was 14, your formula would be 2 times 10 plus 2 times 14, remember to put in brackets, equals 48 units. The perimeter of 3D shapes is actually area, surface area. So, for a 3D shape, you have to calculate the total area of the surface of a 3D object. Example, the surface area of a cube is 6 times edge length times edge length equals surface area. Let's go back to angles. Besides the ones mentioned earlier, there are a still a whole load of angles there. Remember the right angles and the straight angles? Well, they're going to help us find out what are complementary and supplementary angles. How? I'm a right angle. If me are two complementary
complimentary angles. They add it to another me. Now let's bring on the show with a straight angle. I'm a straight angle, or a 180 degree angle if you don't remember. Let's get back those two other right angles. Now pair up you two. See? We are now supplementary angles. We're nearing the end of our tutorial. So, use common sense. We're treading in deep waters. It's okay if you don't really understand this bit. Circles. They're weird. They're not polygons. Your common circle is a big, fat, round circle. Your typical math textbook circle is like this. There's a circle, of course, with a bunch of lines crisscrossing it. One of the lines you need to know is a chord. A chord is a straight line which goes through the circle in whatever direction it wants to and where it wants to be. Here is an example of a chord. One of the most important chords in the circle and geometry is the diameter. The diameter runs straight through the middle of the circle. Half of the diameter is called the radius. One radius is called radii. Only thing in math which is related to food. Pi. Pi is a very, very, very long decimal which probably stretches to the end of the universe. It never repeats, and it dates back to 3,000 years ago when some bright Egyptians, they were very bright because their math was very primitive back then and they had no algebra to help them, discovered pi to be a three digit decimal. Then came along the Greeks, and they discovered pi to be 22 over 7. Now, pi is defined to be 3.14159265355897937, which sounds pretty much like your neighbor's telephone number, but for now we just call it 3.14. The perimeter of a circle is called circumference. So, here's a circle, which is circumference there. So for the basics, there is diameter and radius again. So the formula for circumference is pi times diameter equals circumference, or pi times 2 times radius equals circumference, because two radii make up a diameter. So if your diameter was 2cm, then your circumference of your circle would be 3.14, which is pi, times 2, equals 6.14 centimeters. If your radius was 4 centimeters, then your circumference would be 3.14 times 2 times 4 equals 25.12 cm. If that wasn't hard enough, then let's get moving with area. The area of a circle is pi times radius squared equals area. Easy? Very. Here it goes. If your radius was 2 cm, then your area would be 3.14 times 2 squared equals 3.14 times 4 equals 12.56 cm squared. If your diameter was 4 cm, then you would have to calculate the radius first. Since radius is half of the diameter, then 4 divided by 2 equals the radius. Then when you find it, use the formula above, and your answer should be 6.28 cm squared. So. This is the end of our tutorial on those weird and wacky beasts which are just absolutely horrible at the beginning. But now, we've hoped that you've overcome your fears for them. And thanks for watching! Here's the credits.